So what's going on guys, DIY Dan here again, and in this video I'm actually going to be doing the first oil change on my new used boat that I bought. I have a 21 foot Teague that I purchased, uh, needed some work, and we're doing the first oil change of the season. I do that annually. I also had to redo the upholstery and take care of some other issues as well. So there will be more videos to come. So changing the oil on an inboard engine like a stern drive, V drive, or direct drive on a boat is not that big of a deal. So my boat is actually a direct drive, which means the engine is centered in the boat. But the concept is the same for a V drive, which is mounted at the back. All right, so this is the engine. And somewhere, usually on boat engines, if they're in boards, you've got a drain hose just kind of laying up, sometimes hooked to a bracket. But that is our drain hose for our oil. I pulled this down. I had to reroute it a little bit because you want to make sure that it is at the lowest point so you drain all the oil. So I've got it ran down underneath everything. we got to take this clip off. And then I've got a drain plug. And all we got to do is run it out that hole. So this oil change was a lot easier, it being a direct drive, than my old boat, which was a stern drive. The concept is the same, however, on the stern drive, the oil filter was more of a pain to get to, and you had to run the hose out the back drain plug, and it was just kind of hard to reach and get through the hole. So we're just going to run that down through that hole, and we're going to put a drain pan underneath it and drain it out. Okay, so I've got the hose running out the bottom of the drain plug, and now I cracked them loose. So just loosening it off. So if you have the ability to start it up and warm the engine oil up a little bit, this will go a lot faster. However, if you're planning on starting the engine at your house, you need to make sure you have the attachment to put water to the engine, otherwise you will burn up the impeller. But what I usually end up doing is just doing a bunch of other stuff while I'm waiting for this to drain. And there it's finally coming at a steady pace there. And it'll take about a half an hour, 45 minutes for this to drain. So for this first oil change, I ended up going to an actual marine store and giving them the engine serial number to make sure I got the correct oil filter and the correct oil. So the next oil change, I'll have these numbers and know what I need to get so I can go to an O'Reilly's or Napa and probably save some money. Since the oil filter does mount this direction, I'm pre-filling it with oil so I get oil pressure quicker when I start it. So here's a quick picture of the oil filter number in case you need it for your engine and the type of oil that was recommended for Phoenix, Arizona because depending on the temperatures in your area, they recommend different weights of oil. So while I was waiting for the engine oil to drain, I went ahead and changed out the oil filter on my engine. It was on the port side of the engine towards the top. So now we're just going to spin this the rest of the way off. It's a good idea to put some type of a container underneath it to catch the oil because there will be some residual oil that will drain off as you loosen the filter. One other thing I almost forgot to mention is once you get that oil filter off, make sure that the o-ring did not stick on the housing because you could double o-ring the oil filter and end up with a massive leak. So once I got the old one all the way off, I went in and spun the new filter filled with oil back on and I go hand tight and then I go about a quarter of a turn past just because I don't want any chances of it backing off and leaking. So I think it ended up being about an hour before it did finish draining. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put the cap back on the oil drain hose, tighten it down and run it back up into the engine compartment. So if your drain hose didn't have a clip on it, I do recommend putting one so you can just tie it up to the top of the engine so it's easy to get to for the next oil change. Make sure you're not in the way of any belts, pulleys, or anything else that could damage the hose. Now all that's left to do is put the oil in it. Now the service guy over at Performance Marine that I got the oil from said this thing takes about five and a half to six quarts. So I went ahead and got it in the form of a gallon and two quarts because it was cheaper that way. So I have not gotten around to purchasing the water hose attachment for a garden hose so I could put water to the engine. So therefore I could not start it in my yard. So basically I'm just gonna fill it up where it's on the dipstick. And since I pre-filled the oil filter, it should be pretty close to where it needs to be. So I put a gallon in plus one more quart, and then we're gonna go ahead and check the dipstick to see where we're at. 
On this engine, the dipstick was on the same side of the engine as the oil fill, just in front. So I always wipe it down, then put it back in and check the oil on the dipstick. So we're a little overfilled. However, I, the oil filter was not completely full because it did drain off. I'm gonna leave it at that and I'm gonna take the half quart of oil that I have left and just start it up and check it the first time we go to the lake. Hope this video gave you guys some good information. If so, hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. There'll be more videos to come. Hope to see you next time. Have a good one. Later.